moment of clarity. There was no reason to do this story. Even on a slow news week, it didn't make sense to me. These people had never hurt anybody. They weren't out there driving drunk with their kids or clamoring for attention. They were trying to get through a difficult situation with their dignity intact. Plus, it wasn't going to sell papers. I called the publicist and I told her the story was off and that I was burning the numbers and deleting my files. Mark, what's got into you? The publicist asked. It was just a matter of weeks before they let me go. (laughs) They had their reasons. While on assignment, I'd taken pictures of me embedded with the Minutemen on the Arizona-Mexican border and posted them on an unrelated website. If you'd like to see those photos of those yahoos down there patrolling the border to make old events current, uh, check it out. Just uh, It's boingboing.com. Got a nod from my pal Jeanne Jardin over there, and she posted my little snapshots on my disposable camera that I got to take of these assholes down there in Joe Arpaio country. And uh, so it's on Boing Boing. I guess search the keyword Minutemen, Mark mm-hmm. Ebner. Check it out. I also gave an interview to the Los Angeles Times on comedian Dave Chappelle, who had disappeared to Africa, it turns out, where I said, and I was quoted in the LA Times, he's my hero. If he stays far away from people like us, he'll be fine. Mainly, (laughs) because this job came with a 95% burnout rate, they were trained to watch for early warning signs. I just manifested mine ahead of the curve. The day I saw the head of human resources gingerly making her way to my desk, I told her, I've been waiting for you. My severance check had already been cut. And that's from Six Degrees of Paris Hilton. My, uh, 2008-2009 2008-2009 offering from Simon & Schuster. In my opinion, humble opinion, one of the greatest Hollywood crime stories, chung in, tongue-in-cheek title notwithstanding, <laughs> ever buried by a bashful billionaire who just happened to buy a controlling interest in Barnes & Noble, coincident with my publication date. Hmm. You're in the gray zone. Listener-supported crime podcasting. Break me off some quiche via PayPal, Venmo, or patronize the Gray Zone at Patreon. So, looks like a couple of my old bosses are going to prison. Michael Lacey and Jim Larkin. A couple of cowboys out of uh, AZ who took a less less than cosmopolitan approach to alternative weekly news with their new time syndicate, which still to this day functions as an important long form news outlet in major cities. You remember uh, new times, Carl? Yeah. The, <clears throat> they were uh, like about 16 papers around the country, I think. Oh yeah. And then they, uh, then they sadly uh, started dying off. Or I don't know if it's that maybe revealing that they deserve to. I don't know. Yeah, you know, well, well Jim Lacey was an interesting guy. He, uh, Yeah, mostly he was uh, uh, so new times. Where are they? M- Miami, good paper there. Phoenix, good paper there. Are they still there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, you know, he ran this uh, publishing syndicate. And uh, I, I'll never forget when he started New Times LA, which I was grateful to get in on the ground f- floor at. He... he, he Parachuted into Los Angeles in uh, bejeweled cowboy boots and a cowboy hat. And I remember he, you know, I guess he bought or leased a house in Beverly Hills and he had us all over for a cocktail party. And he was saying, okay, so no sex, 
and no religion. And that wasn't, you know, his mandate for the party that night. That was his <laughs> editorial mandate for New Times Los Angeles. Well, I just chuckled to myself. And uh, <laughs> shortly thereafter, uh, New Times Los Angeles, at the behest of uh, my brother in ink, Tony Ortega, came out with an expose on Scientology. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I think I came came forth with a raft of sex scandal stories. So <laughs> there you go. Michael Lacey changed his tune real fast. But like I said, it looks like he's going to prison. It's a 93 count sealed indictment and... Because, you know, when you look at it, it's sort of like, oh, how the mighty have fallen. I mean, he used to run all these newspapers, but then he didn't fall. He he saw his opportunity. He saw his angle. The secret was in the classified sections as he was able to put them online. And uh, it became a boon for sex workers around the country. Backpage.com. If you go there now... You'll see a big uh, sign from the federal government that says this website has been seized. And that's internationally, wow. too. I'm surprised they haven't replaced it with TrumpSingles.com. Indeed. <laughs> and yes, another stolen point, Doctor. I'm glad to see you and I are on the same web length here. Uh, wavelength, web length. But yes, Dr. David Robinson, indeed, indeed. TrumpSingles.com still exists. With all the text me girls, and as you know, if you've been listening to The Gray Zone, you know I'm a member. So, what are my thoughts on this? He's going down on a 93-page uh, indictment. It's sealed. We don't know what's in it, but they've seized the back page websites, and they have, on the grounds of Child trafficking, sex trafficking, that is. And something's fishy there. It doesn't really make sense to me. Because on a site like that, which actually helped protect sex workers, if you think about it, because A, they had controls. They would get your number. If you called with a blocked number, they weren't doing business with you. They could literally vet you th through that. They didn't need pimps. They didn't need to be walking the streets. It seemed like the kinder, gentler, softer, safer way to practice the oldest profession in the world until the feds got involved. Now, why did they get involved? Well, there was a, certainly a lot of urging from both sides. Uh, I think we have a clip ready, but um, yeah, I mean, it was like everyone from Kam Kamala Harris, who I love and respect, was urging them to shut down Backpage.com because they were allegedly trafficking children. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Let's play a little of that clip there, Dr. David. This is from the Arizona Republic, who I think broke the story. This is Richard Rellis uh, with uh, AZ Central in the Arizona Republic talking to Cindy McCain, uh, who's up at her uh, Cornville home on the day that two things happened. Backpage.com uh, website has been seized, uh, apparently by the federal government, and we have at least an arrest, or I'm sorry, at least a uh, charges against uh, mm -hmm. Michael Lacey, the, the co-founder. Uh, what right. does this day mean to you, uh, Mrs. McCain? Well, I'm, I'm sorry that it came to this. Uh, we had tried to work with Backpage for many years in an attempt to help them see that what, they're, what they were doing was harming children and harming young women and young men. And we just could, we could never get through to them. Somehow they thought they were doing a public service by doing this. And, uh, you know, we've talk, we talked to them in committees. We talked to them at our task force in Arizona. Um, I attended the committee hearing that was in Washington, D.C., and, and it just, it, it, they, just, they just wanted no part of this. They just simply felt that they were in the right and that everybody else was in the wrong. Boom. All right. Cindy McCain, 
you know, I can understand anybody's advocacy against child sex trafficking. Uh, you know, so I don't, I, I don't have any ill will for her, but I really want to look at this. Backpage.com. It, may, it seemed in my mind to make better sense for sex workers to have that extra layer of protection between them and the marketplace. And they could also brand themselves that way. But what are the deeper ramifications here of shutting that down and seizing the website? It's the federal government. Now, I don't know how you feel. But was this politically motivated, this bust? I mean, because let's face it, now, Carl, they have everybody who ever solicited a prostitute via Backpage.com. They have all the information. Whoa. They have who they saw. You know, they probably know what their kinks are and their perversions are. You know, it's... Um, they, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Joe Arpaio, Sheriff Joe, used Backpage.com back in the day. So... I, where boy, I, I, I'm, I'm shaking in my boots. No kidding. <laughs> well, where is all that information going to go? Um, you know, it, it it seems that it would make more sense if you really wanted to take down child sex trafficking via the internet. Why not cut off the head of the snake and go after Google? For God's sakes, you just do a Google search. You go to the dark web, for God's sakes, and you can find whatever you want out there if you're that sick and perverted. But somehow, I believe that Backpage.com, and remember, this is from the publisher who said, no sex, no religion, and found a way to make fountains of cash with classified ads on the Internet. I'm sure that it was monitored. Of course the feds were monitoring that that site. I can't imagine. I would love to see the statistics of actual child sex marketing going on through Backpage.com, which seems very much like a site for sex workers. And this is going to cut in drastically into their trade, into the ways that they can make a living, for God's sakes, you take away their marketing avenues and they end up pimping up again. They end up on the streets again. Lawrence Taylor, the football player, he lives around the corner from my uh, stepmom down in Florida. Hmm. Remember when he got caught with like a 16-year-old in a no-tell motel in New Jersey? You remember that bust? Vague, vague yeah. memory. Well, you know. Yeah. Do you think he consulted Backpage.com to arrange his tryst with a 16-year-old? I think not. I think there's more, probably an underground network of pimps, you know, around the country who can get you a little something, something, and they're not afraid to go down that dark avenue towards what I hope would be a horrible death or in jail for sex trafficking children. Or anybody for that matter. Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, oriental massage parlors that advertise on Backpage.com. And yeah, there may be some sex trafficking going, th going on there. In fact, it's, it's, it's got to be a crime syndicate. Um, but at the same time, I don't think you're going to see any little girls in those little uh, brothels off Ventura Boulevard or every other block in where? Where's the, oh, Eagle Rock has a whole, like, massage parlor row. I mean, wherever you're listening to this podcast, you've probably run across a Korean massage parlor, and yeah, prostitution does go on there, and yeah, they did uh, advertise on Backpage.com. Something hinky's going on. I want to get to the bottom of that. Um, I'd like to know your thoughts. Hit me up on markebner59 at gmail.com. What do you think of all this? Is it a First Amendment issue? Uh, these guys look like they could be going down to, for a long time in federal prison. Um, 
But then I say, why, why not go after Google? Why not legalize prostitution, regulate it, and be done with it or not? 